Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo Out of Time. I'm Krabby Terror 8 and here we are in episode 44 of season 2 of the Investigator Games with everybody's favorite salesman and entrepreneur Bob Jenkins. Yes, and if you are new to the channel, welcome. Yes, what is the Investigator Games? Well, think of it like the Hunger Games, the Squid Games, whatever games you want to think about it. That's what we do here. So we take each investigator true solo and we take them through a scenario. Now in season one, that was The Gathering. And now in season two, we we're in Midnight Masks. Now, depending on how they do, uh, the investigators end up in a league table like this one. Yes, and you can see the performance of all the investigators in the investigator games. Uh, these points are their carryover points from uh, season one. And we can see here, we have everybody here from the very top. We had a bit of an upset last week. We now have equal first Monterey Jack and Leo Anderson all the way down to the bottom. Yes, and so, yes, it's very exciting. There's been some changes. Uh, and, of course, we have a whole new slew of investigators to take through the investigator games, which will be happening after we get through the Edge of the Earth investigators. Uh, which should be done shortly. Now, spoilers. If you are new to the channel, if you are new to Arkham Horror, the card game, uh, please go away and play the game and learn how to play using other videos. I'm assuming you know how to play a little bit. I'm not assuming you necessarily know how to play a lot because you might be here to check out how investigators do in the introductory scenarios, and that's perfectly fine. But if you are brand new to the game, I would recommend that you go and seek out other videos on how to play. There are plenty of them out there. And yes, indeed, if you haven't played the Midnight Mask before, I would probably recommend playing that too. Also, if you haven't seen Bob go through the gathering, I would probably go and watch him there first before you see him go through the Midnight Masks here. And also a shout out to my video on the Midnight Masks. I did a video, an in-depth video, everything you could ever want to know about the Midnight Masks. The gameplay, the story, strategy. I have a whole lot of content creators uh, also give their views on the Midnight Masks. And so that's definitely worth checking out. If you played this scenario a few times, you're finding it difficult. It is a challenging scenario, even at the best of times, even for grizzled veterans like myself. So I don't know. I don't know if I've played the Midnight Master more than anybody else on the planet. I'm not sure, but I've played it a hell of a lot. So, um, yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about Bob Jenkins as a um, investigator details. I know I did that in The Gathering, but I've got to remind myself because <laughs> I've got to play this guy. And I play so many investigators that uh, I, I forget what they all do. There's so many of them there. Uh, and then once we've done that, I'm just going to go through um, every investigator starts with a starter deck, which is the um, essentially the core set and whichever whichever campaign they start with. So obviously that's the core set and Edge of the Earth. Uh, and I've upgraded that because, um, you know, Bob got seven points in the gathering. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the cards. If you want me, if you want to see that, I would go back to the first one because I go through every single card in detail. But in this one, I'm just going to talk about the changes that I've made. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just start with good old Bob. Now, I know quite a bit about Bob because I've been playing Bob uh, in a campaign, not uh, Edge of the Earth, um, but the Dark Matter, uh, which is a custom campaign. Uh, set in the future. It's science fiction. It is fantastic. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. It's got very much Path to Carcosa vibes about it. Uh, I'm playing that. I'm playing Bob in that, but he's not called Bob because in that one we are role playing the aliens characters from Aliens 2. So instead he is Carter Burke, yes, the slimy corporate wheeler and dealer in that. But uh, And we're having a lot of fun 
uh, doing that. So Carter tends to run away, not really get involved. Uh, in the last scenario, he completely disappeared when things got really rough. <laughs> So, um, which is really quite to character and quite a lot of fun to play. But um, so I have played him quite a bit uh, and I do know uh, how he plays, particularly in multiplayer in particular. So stat line. Yes. Now he, he ostensibly is a survivor, but as we will see, he sort of becomes more of a rogue as time goes on. But he see he's he's he is a survivor, at least in, in sort of the little symbol on the in the corner salesman and entrepreneur now his stat line is uh um fairly balanced except for willpower so so he's pretty good in terms of intellect of four fight of three and evasion of three so that gives him a pretty balanced uh stat line which is pretty good the main one is willpower so he has a little bit of trouble old bob in managing the encounter deck and so that's the only thing that's uh, that's a bit of a problem for him. Um, so that so uh, that can mean that that can cause him a few issues. Of course, you can manage that by making sure that you have people on board who can boost willpower, or you have cards in your hand that can boost willpower. But overall, pretty good, pretty balanced. Which means, you know, I don't think he's a bad choice for solo play. And, uh, and I think part of that reason is not only his balanced stats, but also his special ability. Um, his special ability is any time an investigator at your location uh, at your location may reveal to you the item assets in their hand, you can take a little uh, an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to play an item asset from the hand of that investigator at lo your your location under their control. So it's 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 all very specially worded here. Uh, both investigators may spend resources to play, pay its costs, but basically what it means is during your turn, other players or Bob it doesn't have to be other players can play out item assets, and it counts as a free. You get a you get an additional action, so um, yeah, this is th this is quite a nice effect because in solo play it means you can get your items out faster, um, and so that's helpful. You want a deck, of course, which is heavily item focused because of that. Um, but what it tends to mean is, I both in multiplayer and indeed in solo, is that his ability is kind of good um, at the start but it becomes less relevant uh, in the middle to late game because, you know, the way that it tends to work is there's a whole flurry of items come out in the early game. Uh, people have plenty of cash to spare, but by the end of the game or in the later, latter part of the game, you usually have most of the items that you need out, and so uh, it becomes less important. Also in multiplayer... Of course, at the beginning, everybody's in the same location, and so it's much easier to use Bob's special ability in a multiplayer game. But usually what happens in scenarios later is that things are more disparate, so it's not so easy. Not only would you need the item that you want to put out, but you would need to be in the same location as well. So uh, the other thing is in a multiplayer game, you would probably want to play more of a big money Bob kind of um, investigator because you would because note that you can pay, you can spend the resources to pay its cost as well. So Bob becomes a sort of a support character in that sense who can kind of fund everybody else in that way. So plays that kind of role. So his special ability is okay. Um, but it's not kind of, you know, it's not earth shattering in that sense, but it's okay. And um, his elder son effect is just a plus one and for each item, for each item asset you control. So, you know, it's quite easy to get plus quite a bit uh, when the elder son pops out. Now he's, um, he's, he's okay. Physical is six, which is okay. But there's plenty of items out there that can soak up physical damage. So that's not too bad. And he's pretty robust on the a horror side with eight, which is just as well because his willpower is a bit on the low side. Now, if we just flip Bob over, um, we can see here he has a deck size of 30. 
He starts with survivor cards level 0, road cards level 1 to 5, neutral cards 0 to 5, and up to 5 road court cards level 0. So basically he starts as a survivor, but really he's really more of a rogue. So he takes on more of a role as a rogue as time goes on, and he can take those high level rogue cards in that way. Uh, yeah, he also has true dealings, greed, and one random basic weakness. We'll have a look at those in a second. And this is his backstory. According to Bob, the secret to success as a salesman is persistence. People just need to be told what is what it is that they want repeatedly. Recently, Bob came into possession of a handful of cursed golden coins, and he hopes the same persistence he so famously advocates will help him to uncover their origin and purpose. If he plays his cards right, maybe this will be his big score. Maybe he'll finally be able to retire and buy that boat he'd had his eye on and spend the rest of his days fishing in a tropical paradise. Or maybe Bob will finally come to see that all that glitters is not gold. There we go. So that's Bob in a nutshell. So in terms of his deck, like I said, we started with his starter deck, which I put together. In the gathering and uh, so we've made some changes we had seven experience so what did we do with that well we a couple of things Leo De Luca is critical in the investigator games and doubly critical in the midnight masks and the reason for that is is that you know if you can get Leo De Luca in your opening hand um, it can literally mean the difference between top of the table and middle of the table because essentially you get 13 extra, you know, actions throughout if you get it in, you know, 12 to 13. That 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 is like, you know, an extra four, four turns. And time is a huge um, resource, limited resource in the Midnight Masks. So I've upgraded Leo De Luca to his um, cheaper version. So that's one thing that I did. Um, the other thing is that I also added in a backpack and there's obvious reasons why I would add in a backpack because of course I can play items for a free action as well. So you can imagine Leo De Luca and I can play items for a free action. So after the backpack enters play, top 12 cards you can look at in your deck for up to three item or supply cards and attach them to the backpack then you can play them as if they were in your hands. So it's a great way to tutor up extra items and a kind of an obvious thing to put in. I also put in the lock picks for obvious reasons as well. So that allows us to then investigate. So it's a it's an item. So again, we can bring it out for a free action. Um, it has three supplies. You can investigate and add your of agility value so that means we would be investigating at a seven with his intellect if you do not succeed by at least two remove one supply of lock picks so it's a great way of and again in the uh, midnight masks getting clues is critical so we can get out the cultists in that way so that's pretty good i thought um the other than those things i also put in a payday um, and the reason was I had one XP left, and I don't have any um, I don't have any emergency cash in here because we've got a dark horse and we're trying to play dark horse. Um, but there are times when you want more resources, and so this felt like a way to do that. So basically, you gain a resource for each action you perform this turn. If this if it is your turn, end your turn. So you can. Um, Essentially, uh, we can if we need an injection of funds for something, we can make that choice to do that uh, rather than relying on emergency cash to do that. So there's a bit more flexibility around that, I think. So there we go. We, we took out a scavenging because I just didn't find that we... The only thing we lose sometimes is the baseball bat. So, you know, yeah, scavenging... Uh, is sometimes helpful. Um, we took out the flashlight because the lock picks, quite frankly, is better than the flashlight. And I took out a heavy furs so that we didn't have too many cards for the body slots. 
Um, so those are the only changes. So not too many changes. So there we go. Dunno, what do you think? We'll see how we go. So yes, I had a chat to Bob in the green room before we, we started. He's just standing out there near the house on this uh, Arkham morning. It's early in Arkham, of course. We have to do the investigator games in Arkham before the sort of peak hour when there's a lot of traffic around. So um, yeah, um, and Bob's just appraising the house there at the moment. Um, still up for sale, I think, the house. It hasn't sold yet, so hmm, maybe Bob's interested in it. Um, and also, uh, I spoke to him, like I said before this, in the obviously the trailer. Thank you, Miskatonic Trailers, as usual, for the use of trailers uh, for the, 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 um, for the investigator games in the outdoors. And um, he was stunned by, um, by uh, last week's performance. Um, by Monterey Jack. Yes, uh, he's not. He he would like, of course, to uh, join those two. He's got a he's got a pretty good start with seven XP. So uh, I think if he can get Leo, if he can uh, get Leo to uh, to come and help him, I think he's got every chance of doing just as well. Um, so we will see how he goes. All right. So uh, yep, we're all set up here in Octagon. Um, so I think all we need to do now is just wait for the horn to go to start the investigator games. But before we do that, I'll just read out the agenda and the act. Predator or prey? Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin to search for them, you can't shake the feeling that you two are being hunted. Action, resign. You don't want to risk taking too long. So you head to safety with the information you've gathered and uncovering the conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. As we know, action, investigators spend two clues. Her investigator as a group. Draw the top card of the cultist deck. Find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance. Note all six of them. Not all six of them are in the cultist deck. So there we go. So yes, we're waiting. Uh, Bob's just uh, having a look through the... Well, oh, there it goes. There goes the horn. Bob turns around and waves to the crowd. The crowd goes wild. And we are ready to begin episode 45 of season 2 of the Investigator Games. So, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, obviously we want Leo DeLuca, yeah? And we obviously want a weapon because we want to deal with Mars Hunter and Pesky Acolytes. I think also, you know, getting the lock picks would be great. Um, yeah, they're good. If we can get Dark Horse as well, but we won't, kind of won't be helpful in the earlier game, maybe, but that's also, I could make a big difference because, uh, obviously, uh, it gives a big boost to all our stats. So anyway, let's shuffle up. Let's draw many. Let's draw the five. Let's see what we get. Well, there's the Dark Horse, so that's good. And there's a Derringer, but no Leo. So let's throw these three in. Do we throw all of them in? Hmm. Want to maximize our chances of getting Leo De Luca, but these are good cards to get. So I might just throw, get the three. One, two. Ah, no Leo. Ah, oh, bugger. Okay, never mind. He might pop up. So this isn't bad. I mean, we should have thrown in the Derringer. So we've got the baseball bat and the Derringer. We've got Lucky, which is good. We've got some Heavy Furs, which is great. That can be very handy as well. So lots and lots of stuff. So what are we going to do here? So let's kick off. Let's start um, and take our first action. Um, let's do something a bit different here. Let's start by veiling ourselves of facilities, draw a card and gain a resource. So we've now got six resources. So there we go. So that's, that's one thing. Now we can take a free action to play something. 
So let's go ahead and spend two and bring out the baseball bat. Yeah, no, let's not bring the baseball bat. Let's spend three and let's bring out the Derringer. The reason being, um, in the early game anyway, because the problem with the baseball bat is then we can't bring out things like the old key ring. So that's the only problem with that. So that's our free action. Then for our second action, let's spend another one. That was using Bob's special ability there. Let's bring out the old key ring. So now we can uh, use that to, to investigate at a much lower level. Um, do we bring out the heavy furs or do we get ourselves... Well, I'm not going to bring out the heavy furs because the reason is we can use it as a free action next time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, for my, for my final action, I'm going to investigate the house. So we're a two versus a four. Shall I use the heavy, heavy, heavy he ring? Because we're two up. We've got lucky on board, which I don't want to use, but I don't want to waste the... Because um, we, we would be a zero, but I don't want to waste it. So let's go ahead and just see how we go. Let's see what the chaos bag gives us. And it gets a minus one. So I'm glad we didn't waste our key ring on that. So there we go. So that's a pretty good start. So we got ourselves out the 18 Derringer which is great, which means we can deal with uh, some nasty um, acolytes and things if they pop up. So we did that. We, um, we also, um, so we did that first. Then we got a, sorry, no, we didn't do that first. What am I saying? The first thing we did was avail ourselves of the facilities and we got a resource. So we were six resources and got ourselves a card. Then we took a free action. So uh, we still had two actions left, but we took a free action to bring out the Derringer. Then we took another action to bring out the old key ring. And then for our final action, we investigated and successfully got the clue. So we're off and running. So we can get this clue next time and bring out the first cultist. So nice and quick. That's really good. It's a good start. Okay. Let's move to the enemy phase or the, yes, the enema phase, as I call it. And there are no enemies or enemas to speak of. So let's move into upkeep and we get intel report. Okay. Intel report, really nice card. You can pay two essentially and get a clue. Or well, when you play it, you can increase the cost by two and you can discover two clues or you can change it and you can increase its cost by two <laughs> and change at your location to two connections away. So very nice, flexible card for getting clues. Okay. Great, great, great. Alrighty, that's good. Okay, let's... Um... Now, one thing to point out with... Um, it, it, I've, I've made this mistake, but one thing to point out with Bob's special ability, I didn't say this before, it's got to be an item asset. So it's easy to think of it as all assets, but it doesn't include things like, for example, Dark Horse. It wouldn't include allies. It's got to, have the, it's got to be item traded for you to use it. So let's move into upkeep. Uh, oh no, sorry, not upkeep. The mythos phase. The first doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck has... Hey! An acolyte. See? We knew that was coming. Let's put a doom on the good old acolyte. So yes. Um, actually, do we want to... What are we? Fight of three? Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, that's fine. We can deal with that. Okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Bob. Whoops. Hit the F7 button there. And let's see what we need to do here. Okay, so there's a couple of things we could do here. We could use our money to bring out the Dark Horse, and that would give us plus one to everything. Um, the problem with that is, is it's going to use up an action, and I really want to get another clue quickly because if we otherwise we can bring out say the heavy furs um, as a free action because that is an item then we can move we can kill and we can get ourselves a clue so speed is of the essence in the investigator game so I think we do that so let's spend two and bring out the heavy furs which is a free action yep um, then let's take our first action and move to 
uh, the uh, river tan. So we engage the acolyte. Yep. Uh, for our second action, our real second action, we'll shoot the acolyte. So what are we talking here? We'll spend an ammo, so we get plus two to our fight. So that gives us a fight of five, five on three. So we're two up. Let's see how we go with that. Five on three, two up. Chaos bag gives us a minus three. So actually fail that. We actually fail, don't we? Um, what's it? Five on three, minus three. Yep. So that's good because if we fail, we put an ammo back on. <laughs> it's very nice. And then let's spend it again. Let's do it again. Five on a three. Chaos bag, it gives us a zero. So we succeed and we kill the acolyte. So there we go. There we go. Acolyte dies. So that was a slightly disappointing round. We'll just flip this. Slightly disappointing. Didn't quite go according to plan. So we used our free action to bring out the heavy furs. Then we moved up to Rivertown for our first action. Second action, we shot the Acolyte and missed, and we shot the Acolyte again, um, and we succeeded. So next time, we'll get this clue and get out the first cultist. Yes, so let's move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of, so let's move into the upkeep. We get another baseball bat. I think the world's trying to tell me something here with double baseball bats. <laughs> But I want to use up the old key ring first before... I mean, this is going to be really good for the Mars Hunter as long as it doesn't break, of course. But, um, yes. Um, that's the upkeep. So let's move into the Mythos phase. The second Doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has false lead. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. If you have one or more clues... Oh, okay, test for... To four versus a four, and we could waste our intel report. You know what? If we ended up with two clues on here, it's not the end of the world. It's not like it's a high, high shroud location, so I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Four on a four. Let's see how we go. Chaos bag it gives us a minus two, so we don't succeed, so we lose our clue. Ah, oh dear, just when we were getting some momentum, we're back where we were, but that's all right. That's all right. We will move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Bob. Um, now, we, got any, we haven't got any item assets to play now. Well, we do, but I'm not going to bring out the baseball bat yet. No need to, because we still can use the Derringer. So I think... I think what we do is we just go ahead and investigate this. So first, so we're a four already. So it's a one versus a three. So one versus a three. Let's see how we go. Chaos bag gives a minus one. So we get the clue back. We'll go again. And we get another minus one. So we get both clues. There we go. And for our final action, let's throw those clues in. And let's bring out the first cultist. Let's shuffle the cultists. So the first cultist we get is good old Peter Warren. Woohoo! Peter Warren. Yes, Peter Warren at Miskatonic University. Um, a professor of the occult has been seen reading strange books that relate to cannibalism. Maybe he knows something we don't. Mm. Yeah, I love the way he's dropping that eyeball into that flask. That's very weird. Okay, so there we go. So, uh, Pretty straightforward round. We got our two clues and we spent the two clues and we got Peter. We didn't use our special action because we weren't going to bring out the baseball bat. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, this is the slight problem with using Dark Horse and the baseball bat because we kind of, if we, if we, if we, um, well, what we can do is if we bring out the baseball bat, we would need to bring the baseball bat out first and then Dark Horse. So I guess if we can get five resources, we can bring them out together when it's time for the Masked Hunter, which will be in about three turns. So that works out well. Um, but, you know, it's always tricky with Dark Horse because you want your other items to be out. And no Leo DeLuca yet. Where is he? He's really unreliable, Leo DeLuca. He turns up sometimes and then he doesn't turn up again. And it's really annoying. There we go. Upkeep phase. We had another lucky. Well, these, this is good that we're getting these. 
So there we go. Yep. So let's move in to the Mythos phase. And yes, there are three Doom Down. We are halfway through the first agenda. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got Wings of Darkness. Well, 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 there we go. Oh boy. Well, this is not going to do anything. So look, we're going to fail this. We'll basically take a damage and a horror and then just end up where we are. So let's go ahead and see what the encounter deck, uh, the, 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 the Chaos Bag has. Chaos Bag has a skull. So the skull is um, zero, but we fail anyway. So we take a horror and a damage. And, but we don't move because we're already at the central location. Okay, there we go. So let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions. On to Bob. Now here we are. So now we've got some choices here. We've got some choices. Like I said, I don't want to bring out the baseball bat yet because then we will lose what we've got in our hands currently and I'd like to use those up. Um, I don't want to bring out Dark Horse because then it basically means, well, we could, we could bring out Dark Horse because then that would increase um, our abilities, but then we would lose it while we gained more. So maybe we should just go ahead and do that. And then we've got it on board and then, you know, it's going to work sometimes and it's not going to work other times. So that's probably a good idea. Yes, it probably is, you know. Um, now we don't have any clues for Peter Warren. So we'd need two clues for that. So I think the obvious thing to do is, um, hmm. Yes, I think the obvious thing to do is our first action, we'll spend the three and bring out Dark Horse. Yay! So at the moment, we're a plus one. Second action, let's pop into the graveyard because we can get some quick clues here, get ourselves a victory point, and then we can use those clues to go and get Peter Warren. Or we can bring out another cultist. We could do either. Um... So here we are. Now, when we get to the graveyard, we have to test three willpower. If you fail, you've got to take two horror. So we are now running at a three willpower. So it's a three versus three, and we've got Lucky on board. Um, I mean, we've got we've got some ways to soak horror, so I don't feel too bad about it. So let's just do a three versus a three and see how we go. Chaos Bag is a minus one. I don't want to waste my Lucky, to be honest. Uh, so we failed, so let's just take the two horror. We've still got five horror left, so and hopefully we might get Leo De Luca before too long. So we've got one action left. Um, let's go ahead and investigate. So we're a one versus a five. We're a one versus a five. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has. It's got another minus one. It's minus ones all the way today, so we get another clue. There we go. Great. So what we'll do next time is we will get this final clue and go and get Peter Warren. That's what we will aim to do. So yeah, not a bad round. We started at Rivertown. We brought out Dark Horse, so we've got it there when we need it. We moved into the graveyard and took some horror. We then, um, we then, uh, we then, yeah, got a clue. So that was our three actions. Okay, let's move in to the enemy phase. Peter's just working away on his eyeball experiments, so he's not doing anything. Let's move into upkeep. Oh, do we want to gain a resource with... Um, yes, we do want to gain a resource. So what's this? This is greed. Take a horror if you have 10 or fewer resources. If you have five or fewer resources, take an additional... Oh, boy. Didn't, didn't factor this in. Good job. We got that resource. So we take two horror. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Whoops. That, that, no, I completely forgotten that we had greed. That's very nasty. Oh dear. Wow. We really do need uh, some soak now. So we move into the mythos phase for Doom and Down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has a locked door. Attach the location with the most clues, and that is here. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> so either we've got to fight it with a fight of four, 
four and evasion of four. And neither of those are particularly we're particularly strong on. So I think we're going to have to leave the graveyard. That is so annoying. But actually, I've just realized we do have Intel report. So we can use that to get a, a free clue. So I think we might do that. Yes. Okay, so that's the mythos phase. We move into the investigation. So you, the locked door doesn't, you can investigate, but Intel report is just discover a clue. So yes, move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Leo, uh, onto Leo, <laughs> on to Bob. Hmm. Now there's a couple of things we could do here. We could, yes, we could take an extra resource as an action, get the clue, and then move back to Rivertan. Or we could move move to to South Side. You know, this is and see whether we can tutor up. A, an ally in Leo. It's a more of a high risk strategy because it may not be Mars boarding house. It could be the historical society and so therefore we've kind of missed out. So it feels like a riskier strategy to be honest. Yeah. Yes, it does. <sighs> it's just a pity we've only got one. Yes, what do we do, what do we do? Do we take the risk and go to the south side, but then we don't have a clue, which means, hmm. Ah. Look, I think it's better to do it that way. So first action, I'm going to um, gain a resource. Second action, I'm going to play Intel Report which means that we discover a clue. We can discover a clue because locked door is just, you can't investigate and we're not investigating. And then third action, we've got the two clues. Now we don't want to spend the two clues here because if we got Herman Collins, then we would, um, that should be no, no resources, right? Um, if we got Herman Collins, then we would have to deal with Herman Collins the good old fashioned way, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to move back to River Turn. There we go. Okay, so I think that was the best thing to do. The other alternative was a bit risky. Um, so basically we um, we gained a resource, we spent two, we got ourselves the clue and we moved back to River Turn. Oh, and of course then that means we get our first victory point. Whoops, wrong thing. And the crag goes wild. And we'll put a damage on there to just show we've got that victory point. So there we go. First victory point. So yeah, things aren't going too badly for Bob. I feel like things have gotten a little bit slow. Um, you know, and um, but not too bad. I think the baseball bat is a bit of a problem. Um, because it's two-handed. And uh, so in hindsight, I probably should have taken out the baseball bat and put something else in. But anyway, not to worry. Okay, so let's move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of. Let's move into upkeep and we get overpower. Do we want to gain a resource? Yes, we do. It's really nice that it prompts that because we're going to need overpower. So that's a nice card to get at this stage. Let's move into the Mythos phase. Five Doom, so this is going to flip next time. It's getting close. Let's see what the encounter deck has. It's got Hunting Shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. Um, I've just realized I've got this Hunting I didn't Heavy Furs. Um, cancel and return it to the bag, reveal a new one. Yeah, well, let's keep that because we might need it. So let's put, because, you know, once we're dealing some, some you know, we're, we're dealing with the Mars Hunter. Let's take the two damage. 
taking quite a bit of damage in this game so we've just got to be mindful of that but um this this you know if we draw a minus four while we're fighting the mass hunter this would be very helpful to to use okay let's move into the investigation phase three actions on to bob okay now this is really annoying, really annoying, because we've got the old key ring, and now I wish I hadn't brought it out. But anyway, we've got the we've got the mass hunter, and really the derringer is not going to do enough by itself. Unfortunately, the old key ring. So I think what we do is first action, we take a resource. Then we will use a free action to bring out the baseball bat. So we lose both of these, I'm afraid. So we've now got the baseball bat on board. Um, so we're now attacking at a, with the dark horse. That should be zero. Now with dark horse, we're running at a three, five, six. We're running at a six with dark horse, so that's good. Um, so we, we add, took the resource. We got a free action with the baseball bat, which is great. We've got two actions left. So either we could bring out another cultist or we could grab Peter Warren. Um, I think it's better, bird in the hands, better than two in the bush type of idea. So let's move into Miskatonic University. And for our final action, let's spend two uh, clues and we will put Peter Warren into the victory display. And the crowd goes wild. There we go. It's our first uh, victory point from a, from a uh, cultist. And that means we've got a couple of victory points before the Mars Hunter's on us. I feel like we're in a reasonable position now to deal with the Mars Hunter. We've got the baseball bat on board. If we get the skull, then of course we can use heavy first to, to, to manage that. Um, but we've also got another baseball bat. We've got a couple of luckies on board and we've got an overpower. So I feel like we're in an okay situation. The most disappointing thing was losing, losing the old key ring. In hindsight, maybe not such a good idea to bring it out. But anyway, anyway, that's the way that it goes. Okay, so let's move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of. Let's move into upkeep. Oh, gain a resource. Ah. Oh. <laughs> no, we don't want to gain a resource right now. Oh, Leo, now you come out. Oh, my goodness. Talk about worst time. We might get payday, though. If we got payday, we could bring him out. But really, what a time for him to appear. Ah, never mind, never mind. Okay, let's move into the mythos phase. There we go. Six doom. Let's deal with that. Let's flip that. There we go. There he is. Hello, Bob. Oh, you're wearing heavy furs. Oh, you got the baseball bat. Oh, I can see it in your eyes. You're looking dark like a dark horse. Oh, this is going to be a rough and tough fight, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a bit worse for wear, though. Jeez, okay. Yes, um, let's bring out the Agenda 2A. Time is running short. It is indeed. We have eight turns left. So there we go. But uh, all is not finished because we have to see what the encounter deck has. And it has... <laughs> oh, no. Not a crib chill. Oh, my goodness. No. Oh, test four. What are we? We are a three. Well, at least we're a three. Ah, so we might need to use... Ah, we can't use Lucky because we've got no money. That's right. I just realized Lucky is useless without the money. Thank you, Dark Horse. Um, oh, boy. Okay, let's go ahead. Chaos Bag gives us a zero. Ah, see, this is where our willpower... And we didn't have any willpower pips. So that's a real pity that we're only three versus a four. So something, one of these has got to go. Well, the baseball bat's definitely not going. Probably of the two, probably heavy furs has got to go. Yeah, because even if we use heavy furs to draw another symbol, 
that would just do a damage to heavy furs and we'd lose it anyway. So there we go. Just realized, of course, Dark Horse, you're probably saying to me, dudes, you can't use Lucky if you've got Dark Horse. So anyway, there we go. Wow. That was really unlucky. Thank you, Cryptchill. Investigation phase. Three actions on to Bob. Let's go ahead and fight. <laughs> so what are we here? First action, we will fight. Six. So we're doing... Um, we're a four. We are a six, aren't we? We're a six versus a four. We're two up, but let's use overpower. Make it an eight versus a four. So we're eight versus a four. And we do two points of damage. Let's go ahead and see how we go. And Chaos Bag gives us a plus one. So we absolutely succeed and do two points of damage. Ow! Yep. And we get to draw a card. <laughs> Perception, how helpful. All right, so that's our first action. So that's a good start. That's a good start. Okay, second action. Let's go ahead and fight again. So what are we looking at? Again, we're looking at a three, four, five, six on a four. We're two up. Do we throw in the other baseball bat? I think that would be a mistake. <laughs> I think that would be a big mistake. I think we keep hitting with the baseball. We're two up. Chaos bag it gives us a minus three. So swing and a miss. A swing and a miss. Now we have a choice here. We've got one action left. We could either go four and a two and evade or try and attack again. I'm feeling like a four on a two is probably a good idea. Yep, four on a two. Is that in? Yes, let's go for a four on a two and see if we can evade. Four on a two. Chaos Bag is a plus one, so we succeed. And we'll leave him here, but basically the Mass Hunter is evaded. Woo! Where have you gone? <laughs> We've hidden. Hidden from the Mass Hunter. So there we go. That wasn't a bad round. We hit the uh, Mass Hunter for two. We then, um, we then uh, missed on our second one with a minus three. And then we successfully evaded the Mars Hunter. So we won't take any damage, which is just as well. So hopefully we can dispense with the Mars Hunter next time. Let's move into the enemy phase. Nothing there. Upkeep phase. There you are. Gain a resource. Do we want to gain a resource so we get lucky? Um, wow, because it means if we fail, we could get plus two. So we would be run. Let me think about this. So if we took a resource, we would then be fighting at a five versus a four. But if we fail by minus two, so if we do a so if we get a minus two or a minus three, we could use the lucky. Ah. Hmm. And then we would be able to. Whereas if we don't, we're just two up. Which means minus two works. Hmm. I think we're better off ta not taking the resource. Let's, let's leave it at that. Okay, because... Dark Horse gives us other pluses, so, yeah. Okay, let's move into the Mythos phase. The first Doom of the next one is down. Let's see what the Encounter deck has. It's got a locked door. Uh, most clues, well, that's right here. That's all right. We'll send that to the back. I guess we won't be getting clues there. Okay, let's move into the Investigation phase. Three actions. On to Bob. Let's go ahead and fight again. So, yep. So again, we're running at a three, a five, a six. A six on a four, a six on a four. Chaos Bag gives us a cultist, which is a minus two. So we succeed, yay. And we do another two points of damage and we don't lose the baseball bat. However, put a doom on the nearest cultist enemy, which is of course the masked hunter. Let's go again. Let's swing the old baseball bat again. Six on a four. Six on a four. Chaos bag gives a minus one. Yeah, minus one. And we succeed. And the mass hunter goes down. Ah! Hooray. And the crowd goes wild as we get another two victory points. 
Wow. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Now, where was there somewhere where you can get... Yeah, I think you can get resources from downtown. So actually, what I'm thinking is... Because um, I don't think we bother getting the resources here. Is... Um, is... Do we move up to here or do we go? No, let's just move. Yep. Okay. So next time, what we might do is move into downtown, grab some resources and see if we can get Leo DeLuca out because that will make things a lot faster. Um, I think that's a good idea. So there we go. Okay. Let's move into... That. So that was pretty good. We... Killed the Mars Hunter, swung the baseball bat a couple of times, and then we moved into North Side. All right, let's move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of. Upkeep, manual dexterity. Do we gain a resource? Yes, let's gain a resource. Okay. Let's move into the Mythos phase. Bit of a risk taking a resource because here we can have a hunting shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. Well, we don't have any clues, so we have to take two damage. Wow. If we get another one of those, we are dead. That's bad. That's why we need Leo DeLuca on board, because we need to soak some damage. Okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions. On to Bob. So let's move into... Um, downtown i'm pretty sure this is where you can get resources no it's not <laughs> you're all saying no that's not it where do you get the resources why did i think there was a place where you got resources oh my goodness This allows us to heal three horror. So let's do that. <laughs> let's bring that down to two. And let's take another resource. I will see if we can get Leo DeLuca this way. All right, so that was... <laughs> you think I would know these by now. I said how much I know the Midnight Mass. So yes, we moved into downtown. We healed three horror. And then we took a resource. So there we go. Enemy phase, no enemies to speak of. Upkeep. Yes, we will gain another resource. So we can, yep. Let's move into the turn 10. We're really running out of time here, aren't we? Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got false lead. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. Okay. Ah, wings of darkness. You are kidding me. Okay, we're running at a three, a three versus a four. Oh, we can make that a five. We can make that a five. And actually we've got lucky here. So thank goodness we've got some resources. So we're running at a five... A five versus a four. We're one up. Let's see what the chaos bag has. Plus one. Yay. So we don't do that. Manual dexterity. Draw a card and we get elusive. Okay. Let's move in to the investigation phase. Three actions. On to Bob. Right. Let's not mess around anymore. Okay. First action. No, first two actions. We're going to take two resources. Final action. We're going to spend all the resources and we're going to bring out Leo. And so that means we've still got an action left. What do we do here? Do we try and get some clues? Yes, we do. From here, well, there's two clues here and a victory point. There's four shroud, and this is three. So maybe, maybe we move back to north side and use north side to get the clues instead. I think that's probably a good idea. So let's just move back. Okay, so that was a pretty nothing round. We basically took some resources, got Leo out. So now we're running at four actions, which is great. 
it means we can get some clues and get some more cultists uh, out. So that's good. So we move into the enema phase. There are now enemas to speak of. We move into upkeep. Oh, do we gain a resource? Well, yes, I think we do. I think we do gain, gain a resource. Wow, leader Chandler. Well, we can't use leader Chandler because I've realized we've only got one. Um, but that's all right. I'd rather have Leo than, than Lita. So there we go. We've moved into the upkeep phase. Let's move into the mythos phase. There are already four. We're already halfway through. Time is really running away from us. Oh, now we get a hunting night gaunt. Oh, really? Now we get a hunting night gaunt? Now we do? Oh. Wow. Okay. Three actions onto Bob. Four actions onto Bob, I should say, because we've got Leo now. Right. Okay. We've only got one resource, which is good for Lucky. So I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking we fight this. Oh, he's at three, isn't he? So what are we running at? We're running at a five. A five versus a three. And we've got Lucky on board. So I'm thinking we just try and kill this thing. Let's try and do that. So first action, we will swing. See how we go. We get a skull, which is bad. I mean, we succeed. Yeah. So, this, that, so we get two damage. But now, uh, anyway, we're now running. Oh boy, it's just annoying, isn't it? I think we just go ahead and keep fighting him. So he's a three and we are a three. A three versus a three, aren't we? We're a three versus a three. Damn it, let's make that a four versus a three. We're one up and we've got lucky. So let's go ahead and attack. Oh boy, and that's a complete miss. Let's try again. A zero, so that's a three on a three. So we actually, we're a three, aren't we? A three, yep, so we succeed and do another point of damage. And our final action, we will punch the Night Gaunt again. Chaos Bear gives us a minus one. So that's okay. So that's a three versus a three. So we fail by one, which means we can spend our lucky and pass and kill the Night Gaunt dead. Wow. So that took up a whole go. <laughs> so basically we, um, we use the baseball bat and it, it destroyed the baseball bat, but we did two points of damage. Then we tried again, and we um, we didn't have the baseball bat. We missed, and then we success successfully hit twice and killed the hunting night gaunt. So there we go. That was another wasted turn, unfortunately. No enemies, though. We move into upkeep, and we get the Derringer. Do we want to gain a resource again? Yes, we do. Uh, there is a reason. There is a, there is a method in my madness here, but it's not really been playing out. So we will move into the Mythos phase. Five Doom of Eight. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got the Wizard of the Order. No, 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 no. Really? Really? Uh, no. With a Doom. Oh, dear. Every time we try and do something. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Move into the investigation phase. So we're getting some really difficult choices here because four actions. Because either we go and kill the wizard of the order. Because this is already at six. So next time, and when does, 
at the end of the mythos phase. So it will move to seven. So we've got a go before we need to go and kill him. So he could spend a turn getting some things done here. So why don't we do that? So the first thing we're going to do... I uh, See, he's got a fight of four. So I'm not sure we can... Unless we get the Derringer out. Yeah, we would have to spend two resources. We could then bring out the Derringer. So we could spend all this time just to basically save us one turn. The other alternative is to get these two clues and get out another cultist and try and get that cultist before the end would be the other thing to do. I think either way, I just think wasting time on the Wizard of the Order is just going to be annoying. The annoying thing is if it's someone like Ruth Turner, we'd have to go through the Wizard of the Order anyway. Ah, boy, how frustrating. Let's take our free action, though, to bring out the old key ring. That's the first thing now. We're now running again, plus lots. Then let's take our first action to investigate with the old key ring. So that minus two shroud. So that brings the shroud down to one. So we're running at a one versus a four. Let's make it a one. Do we need to make it a six? One versus four. Yeah, let's make it a one versus a six. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. We succeed, we draw a card and we get a resource. And because we succeed, we remove one from the old key ring. Let's go ahead again. Let's use the old key ring. Let's see what we get. We get a skull, so that's minus one. So we get another one. Yeah, great. Which means the crowd goes wild because we've now got another victory point. Yay! Let's go ahead with our third action and spend those two clues. And let's see who we get. And we get Herman Collins. Okay. So we've got Herman Collins. Right. Well, let's just go for it. Let's move. Let's move to here. I think we can just about do this and we can get Herman Collins and finish the game. Easy. And yep, that's what we do. Okay. So barring getting something terrible in the encounter deck, we should be okay. So we will move into the enemy phase. The enemy just sits there. We will move into upkeep and we get the meat cleaver. Do we want to gain a resource? No, we don't. We don't want to gain a resource. Uh, we will move into the mythos phase. There is six, seven doom down and then a, uh, uh, and then we draw from the encounter deck. Now, let's just pray for something that's not going to stop us getting to the graveyard. Right, so no enemies. I think it's mainly enemies, isn't it? Well, well, no, no, no. It's more specific than that. No hunting nine gaunts. I think the only thing that's going to stop us getting to where we need to get is the hunting. No, the other thing is if we get the shadow, which does two points of damage, because we would have to put them on Leo DeLuca, which means we wouldn't be able to finish as well. So those hunting shadow and hunting nine gaunt, I think, are the only two things that are going to stop us. Encounter deck gives us a mysterious chanting. Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Great. Well, that doesn't matter. So that's actually three on the nearest cultist enemy, right? Thankfully, though, this doesn't cause the, um, the, um, the agenda to advance. So that's fine. It's going to advance anyway. So there we go. That's the end of the Mythos phase. So we will move in to the investigation phase. Four actions. On to Bob. First action, move to East Town. Second action, move to River Town. Third action, move into the graveyard. Test three versus three. Three versus three. Let's make that a four versus a three. Yeah, four versus three. Chaos bag gives us a minus one, so I think we succeed. Two, three, four. Yep, we do. So that's good. And then for our final action, 
we will discard four cards and we will put Herman Collins into the victory display and the crowd goes wild there we go there we go so we move into the enemy phase enemy doesn't do anything we move into upkeep we get dark horse do we gain a resource no nah. and then we move into the mythos phase and there we go ladies and gentlemen the bells toll yes the bells toll 12 bells ring across the town it's midnight there's no time left you must act on the information you've collected from the cultists you've found and there we have it ladies and gentlemen there we have it the crowd goes while bob waves to the crowd so not too bad 14 turns and we ended up with what did we end up with one two three four five six victory points so that gives him a very respectable 13 victory points that puts him pretty high up so there we go that was a kind of uh yeah, it's, we started strong and then sort of things kind of really got bogged down in the middle and we kind of just uh, it wasn't until we got Leo DeLuca on board so yeah it was didn't go as well as we would have hoped for for Bob it was a pity that Leo DeLuca turned up so late uh, apparently he missed his train and all kinds of things but he's always got excuses like that but pretty pretty good good going I think um, for Bob, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, I can see, though, that Dark Horse is a bit problematic in this deck. Um, it was just a bit finicky to kind of manage that. There was also the baseball bat wasn't ideal either. So in hindsight, I think we should have maybe taken out the Dark Horse and the baseball bats and we could have things could have been a little bit more streamlined. But anyway, that's the way it goes in the Investigator games. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, next time in episode 46, I believe we'll be taking Lily Chen through the Investigator Games. Yes, Lily Chen, who is, of course, the uh, mystic in the Edge of the Earth. We will be taking her through the uh, Midnight Masks, and we will see how she goes. But until then, I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. Thank you.